acid lakes, giant cacti, and more minerals. You already know why you're here, guys. Let's do it. Top 10 deadliest substances in the world. You should never touch part three. Let's get nerdy. Kicking off the list at number 10, we have lake acid. Not to be confused with Lake Placid, although that one's pretty bad too. The Lake of Acid is in Ethiopia, and since we mentioned super acid on part one, I figured this would be a fun one to bring out. Also referred to as the gateway to hell, nice. The Danaki Depression is made up of boiling hot ponds that release chlorine and sulfur gases into the air, into your big nose. So you don't even have to take a dip, just standing around this lake can instantly kill you. So where does something like this come from? How does a lake of acid just come to be? Like, what the f this horrifying landscape is the result of three continental plates being torn apart. It's part of the East African rift system and not one, but two active volcanoes surround the Danaki Depression, hence the, you know, bubbling magma lurking below the dry landscape. It's the hottest place on Earth for a reason. Active hydrothermal ozones aren't new, that's what Yellowstone National Park is, but you need a gas mask to take a dip here, so it's worth mentioning. Number nine, cactus. These pointy plants are no laughing matter except for when they wear sunglasses. That's a little silly, I actually kinda like that a bit. These needles that stick out, obviously you don't wanna touch this plant, but what exactly will happen if you do by accident? Well, it depends which cacti you touch. Also, I like saying cacti, I think it's plural for cactus. I hope it is, because I'm pretty confident. I've been telling people for like five years it's cacti. The most deadly is the saguaro cactus. It grows up to an intimidating 50 feet tall. So unless you live in Arizona or California, you don't have to worry about bumping into Spike Jones over here. These needles are of course massive, but what really sucks is the toxic sap that enters your bloodstream. So if you're handling this cactus for some reason, you need to use gloves. There's also a cactus that straight up jumps at you, like it moves, it jumps. How scary is that? Back in 2014, during the PGA Golf Tour in Arizona, Rory McIlroy accidentally hit a golf ball straight at a cameraman right in his chest, which already sucks, but when he stepped back after being struck by Rory's golf ball, again, in the chest, Chola Cactus attacked him. What a two for one. Then fans had to gather around and pick them out with keys. They had to pick cactus out of a guy's back with keys. That's amazing, what a horrible day. That's why you don't watch live golf. You're in the middle of nowhere, and also, you're watching live golf. Number eight, you. It literally has the word ew in it, so you shouldn't forget this one. It's also referred to as ground hemlock, and despite how they look, these are not berries. They're cones, almost, or bells. They're evil, they're poison, they don't look appetizing. To kids, though, anything bright that glows on trees, they're like, also bell. So they eat it, it's dangerous. They're actually like the main target, we gotta watch out for that. They often don't think twice. The main toxin that we're playing with when it comes to you and your you is Taxol. Taxol is commonly used in chemotherapy. Right now we're at the point where we're making these in a lab because their populations haven't exactly sprung back into action. We kind of need them right now. They're making you in a lab. Yeah, they're making you in a lab. I'm talking to you, dude. If you ingest the Taxol, you're minutes away from having a bad night. Either hypothermia, seizures, respiratory failure, you might actually go into a coma. It's really not good at all in any sense. Stay away from it. It only takes half a gram of these flat pointy needles to kill you. So just avoid all that smoke in total. Number seven, holly. There's nothing holly and or jolly about these berries. Another common red berry is the American holly, AKA Ilex opaca, which sounds more evil. It's a tasty treat for birds, but like a lot of us probably don't realize is our feathery friends can eat poison pellets all day long and never skip a whistle. They're just hashtag built different. Humans, however, if we ingest a holly jolly holly, we're welcoming in an alarming amount of toxins. You're also ingesting illicin, which is a straight path to vomiting, nausea, all that nasty huh, huh stuff. Normally I wouldn't include holly on a list like this, but tis the season, the more you know. Number six, golden frogs. One of the world's deadliest substances comes from the cutest amphibian, frogs. Don't let his little wet hands and tiny smile fool you. This guy is nothing but trouble. Or rather, the alkaloid on their skin is. So if you're catching frogs on the weekend in human forests of Columbia, as we all do, leave the golden frogs alone. A Super Mario star will not pop out when you catch it. Instead, the batraco toxin will interfere with your sodium ion levels in your nerves, resulting in your heart failing. We mentioned that LD50 scale before, that's the lethal dose table, and it tells you which toxins are worse than others, and how many milligrams of the substance kills 50% of the test subjects. The track of toxin on the LD50 is only two micrograms, so two grains of salt, really, that's the size that we're talking about, that can kill you. The interesting part is, it's not the frogs that produce these toxins, but rather lab-born frogs. These ones aren't poisonous, meaning that it comes from their natural diet somewhere. American ornithologist Jack Dombachier was in contact with a hooded 
patui, that was the bird that I mentioned on part two, and after he touched his mouth, it instantly started to go numb. So something in both these animals' diets is making them super villains. Isn't that lovely? What is it? Tell us. Number five, the electric eel. Awesome, that's the worst thing I've ever seen, neat. The moray eel, first of all, don't do what he just did. Don't go up to a random eel and start rubbing it like it's a genie lamp. It's not a smart move. That was the moray eel. That one can bite your fingers off and you should never touch eels in the first place because a lot of them are electric. As its name suggests, these type of eels can mess you up even if you were to get the first hit. Specifically, the newly discovered two and a half meter Electrophorus volti. Great name, gets to the punch. Appropriately named after Alessandro Volta, the guy who invented the battery. Cool. It can release a shock up to 860 volts, which is more than seven times the voltage of a wall plug. A swimming wall plug that gets hungry and has teeth. <laughs> See ya. Number four, blister beetles. Nice, that's a great name, blister beetles. I wanna avoid this beetle right away. The blister beetle is chock full of cathartin. It's also seen in the Spanish fly. See, back in the day, like, when you know we didn't know much, medical experts would use cathartin to introduce blisters. That was a common remedy, I guess. These little bugs have this poison inside of them. Blister beetles are tiny and they often sport a metallic green or blue wing cover. If a bird tries to eat one of these, stick around because it will not stay down. That beetle will come right back up and then continue on his little little beetle business, whatever they do. Probably something to do with tax forms, I would assume. On the outside, cathartin causes a dermatitis reaction and if you have the misfortune of swallowing one of these bugs, like that sad bird, it could very well be your last meal. Back in the 1800s, people would ugh, lick them. Uh, don't lick bugs, if I had to tell you that. Now you know. Hit that thumbs up for not licking bugs. Spread the word. <laughs> Number three, the cow killer. If you see a hairy red and black bug of any kind, don't pet it, okay? <laughs> like, just don't, this is a horrible list. I'm like, don't do any of these things. The Eastern Velvet Ant, AKA the cow killer, isn't actually an ant. Spoiler alert. Despite what I, you know, just said, it's actually a wasp. The female is wingless, so it looks like an ant. But don't let that get to your head. Her sting is extremely painful. She doesn't get along well with her own type. That's how mean she is. These cow killers are usually found riding solo rather than nesting with, you know, hundreds of other friends. Here's the most evil thing about this wasp slash ant slash hairy creature from hell. It's a parasite to bumblebees. We're trying to save bees. Meanwhile, these females are laying eggs in beehives in order for the wasp to be born and then immediately have an all-you-can-eat breakfast. That is sad, but also it's nature. Nature sucks sometimes. If you have the misfortune of stepping on a cow killer, two things will happen. A pheromone is released on impact. This calls the colony to attack. Hot start, great. There's venom coming from their saliva, so already it sucks, but then the actual venom enters your bloodstream after the initial bite. Double the fun, triple the excitement. Where's the hospital? Number two, tetrodotoxin and batrachotoxin. I tried that so many times before, but we cut it. Grab your goggles and speedos, because we're heading underwater for this two-in-one. With an LD50 that's less than that of batrachotoxin, mitotoxin is part of the reason that I don't even mess with shellfish. It's made up of dinoflagellate, marine plankton that can cause heart failure if consumed. This cardiotoxin cranks up the flow of calcium ions running through the cardiac muscle membrane, and obviously that doesn't feel good. Mitotoxin is often found in tropical and subtropical areas of the Pacific, but again, unless you're poking around shellfish and just eating random fish that you find, you should be pretty good to avoid this problem. A fish you should never touch, however, is the puffer fish. When disturbed, these guys like to expand out like a balloon from hell, and their prickly skin, of course being riddled with toxins, will jab you. Remember that last scene in Finding Nemo where all the fish are finally free, but then they're stuck in bags? Everybody in the theater all whispered to each other that the puffer fish could just expand and then pop all the bags. True, we know what's up. That would definitely work. Thing is, the puffer fish would be the last man standing. Almost all these balloon kits contain tetrodotoxin, which is about 1,200 times more poisonous than cyanide. And finally, number one, arianite. Tiny crystals you might accidentally <gasps> inhale. What a terrifying way to finish this part three. Arianite in its natural form is fascinating. It's this fiber, almost. This thin mineral that if touched will break apart into tiny pieces and float in the air. First of all, that's not gonna feel nice, smacking a mineral. If you ever had glass stuck in your hand, this is way worse. Arianite is part of a group of minerals called zeolites, these hollow minerals with almost hairy looking insides. Exposure to these can cause lung cancer. Now luckily, arianite mining stopped back in the 80s, but that doesn't mean miners are off the hook necessarily. Even 
Even when mining other zeolites, this deadly mineral can still attack because it's in the air. It was discovered in 1898, but it wasn't until the 1970s where the Turkish government found out it was very lethal. They did a study on why there was so much mesotheloma in the lungs of villagers in the mountain region, and this mineral was the cause for 43% of all those deaths. The death rate for asbestos installers was a 9.7% in comparison, and that still was horrible. Just stick to mood rings, leave area night alone. Guys, those were 10 more deadly substances you should never mess around with. If you enjoyed this video, prove it and hit that thumbs up. That way I can come back with a part four because I'm having a blast with these random science vids. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. Keep being you and we'll see you next time on Most Amazing Top 10. Peace.